Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM19 story, part of the furniture with me, Daniel. It's season 17, episode 3, and today we've got one of our biggest games of the series, as we head to the new camp in the Champions League group stages to face the mighty Barcelona. They're managed by Neil Wood, who was formerly the United manager in this game, and of course they're a side we beat in a Europa League final just around 18 months ago. But at the new camp in the biggest stadium we've ever played in, in, this is going to be a completely different challenge. We've started the season pretty well, despite being camera shy so far. Our only two defeats have come on camera, albeit in two of our most difficult games. So it is looking pretty good overall, despite a couple of little concerns. Barcelona missing a couple of players through injury today, and we've just got Darren Palmer doubtful. He probably wouldn't have been in the squad anyway, so not a massive concern so far. Alex Andrade, as you can see, is scoring goals again. Four so far this season so he's starting to look a little bit better and hopefully that'll bode well for the season. Again before we start apologies for the slight crack in my voice still we are back on the road to full health but the voice just isn't keeping up at the same rate so apologies in advance for the little times that it cracks during the episode hopefully it won't be too much of a concern but we're really enjoying the season and we want to go and get into it so we're not going to wait any longer we want to get into our second group stage game we've played one already as well as a few Premier League games so let's go and have a look at them you're with me for the Chelsea game on camera our only league defeat so far, a disappointing 1-0 defeat, despite being a pretty even match, we just weren't clinical at all in front of goal, something that seems to have changed since then. 10 goals in the 4 games since, first at home to Austria Vienna in the Champions League, we should definitely be finishing above these guys and at least securing 3rd place in the group. Lee Rutherford and Dimitri Lapin had basically wrapped it up after 12 minutes and from there it was a professional performance to ensure we got the job done. Then we followed it up with an emphatic 4-0 win against Southampton. Alexander Yeladian continuing his good start to the year. Alex Andrade getting himself a brace. And then Singy with his first goal for the new club. And in a way to Wigan in the Carabao Cup, the backup side got us over the line. Dimitri lapping that man again with a brace. Three goals in two starts for him. And then at home to Aston Villa, another comfortable win. Omar missed a penalty but scored our second. After Bruno Moraes, the left back, had given us a first half lead. So a really good run of games for us recently, but of course they were all against winnable opposition and the ones we expect to bulldoze off camera before coming back to show you the big games. I know it's nice to see attacking football and I will always try and throw in one a season, but generally you want to see the biggest occasions and most people like seeing a bit of struggle too. So let's go and get into this game against Barcelona, which is certainly going to provide some of that. If we look at the other game in the group, Austria Vienna v Inter, I'm not sure who won the first game between the sides. Inter played Barcelona, of course, while we were beating Austria Vienna. So let's go and see who were the winners there. A draw, that's pretty helpful for us. So that's going to leave us in a good position if they keep dropping points against each other. So of course it'd be a miracle if we could get a result today as it's raining over in sunny Spain. No complaints for us though. The closer we get to English conditions, the more chance we've got for Torquay. Let's look at our starting 11. Pretty much our first choice one now. We've got Stojanovic in goal as the sweeper keeper. Cura and Marais the fullbacks. And Singy joined by McDonnell in the middle. We're back in in the holding role, Cater and Omar in central midfield, Yeladian with his new lease of life on the right, Silla over on the left, and Andrade scoring goals up front. We've got the likes of Souza, Kante, Lapin and Rutherford on the bench, all strong attacking options, and in last season's first choice centre half hole, and Richard Quirk and Raphael also. So defensive options there if we need them, we can even go to a back five if we need to hold on. But let's go and get into this game with our new tactic, the slightly lower tempo seems to be working, as does the support in full backs, just giving us a bit more solidity. You saw we only conceded one against Chelsea last time, and none in the four games since. So we'd like another clean sheet here tonight, but that's going to be easier said than done. Well, it's a 4-4-2 for Barcelona, something that's a little bit unusual at this level. They've got Venturini over on the right wing, though. He's someone we've got to be aware of. I just remember that game on camera a couple of years ago, where he scored a hat-trick for Manchester City against us, and I think it included two brilliant free kicks, certainly at least one, and it ended up costing us the game. I think we went down 3-2 on that day. So he's a world-class player, and I'm sure there's many more with it being Barcelona. So let's go and talk to the lads, and see if we 
we can get them to prove a point. Stuart Jelling loves his favourite team talk, and to be fair to him, it seems to motivate the lads. So let's go and get into the kickoff. No tunnel interview today, and look at the size of that stadium. You don't see that often in England. So let's go and get into the first half. It's Barcelona with the kickoff. The centre halves have got it from the Dumbia kickoff, and now they've got it in central midfield. Hopefully, we can see out the first highlight, as again, the change kit doesn't make much sense. We've changed from yellow into blue, even though Barcelona play in blue or red. They've just had a chance with the first moment of the match as well, headed wide after 25 seconds, and Andes hitting the side net. In. I know it's a very different shade of blue, so it's not too much of an issue on this occasion, but why on earth we've changed into the same colour kit, I'll never really have an idea. We've got a first chance with Andrade from a free kick, but it's comfortably wide of the post, and with a quarter of an hour gone, we're still nil-nil, as we've got a long throw on the left. A diving header away, quite a nice animation to see. Silla gets it back out to Moraes, he deflects to Omar whose shot's blocked. Brilliant closing down from Barca, and now they counter attacking at speed. Venturini gets it wide to Lucas on the left, into the box and Nsingi heads clear. Back in S finds Yeladian on the right, who will try and work it down the line. He comes over halfway, still unchallenged, but now he's fallen to Andrade. Good effort straight at Nebel, the Barcelona keeper holds. We're back almost immediately with a Barca highlight. Out to Venturini on the right. He comes inside to midfield. There's a lot of names I'm afraid I can't pronounce here. And Brosh, I think that is in the middle. Venturini picking it up again. Out to Osses on the left hand side. Right hand side for Barcelona, of course. But we're trying to defend down our left. Something we've struggled with at times this season. It's Lucas inside to Hernandez. His shot's blocked and it's cleared. Bacanes doing the dirty work. And with 20 gone, we're still holding on. We're back on the Barcelona right with Venturini as he's bringing it out from the back. Dumbia switches it as far as Lucas, who holds it up on the left. Into Hernandez on the edge. Brilliant effort at goal. No back lift at all, but it's just wide at the left-hand post. Stadjanovic struggling to get there. We've got an in-swinging corner from Omar. McDonald gets a free header there, but it's into the side netting and Barca survive. They still haven't had a shot on target. Half an hour gone and it's been a good game. and We've certainly looked a match for Barca. It's Moraes on the left-hand side with a throw-in. Plays a 1-2 with Bacanez. Deep in our own half, we don't want to lose it. We've conceded some silly goals from there before. It's Omar going forward to Andrade. Poor first touch though and Algobia wins it back. And Brugia gets it into midfield. And Brosh in the centre circle. Back to his central midfield partner. Now Venturini on the right. We're pressing them well, keeping them in their own half. But it's surely it's only a matter of time before they find a gap in our team somewhere. Here's Venturini the man to do it. And there's the through ball. Hernandez with a shot which is blocked by Nsingi. And the cross is cleared away as well. Cura the former Real Madrid man of course be itching to do well against Barcelona but they are slicing us open with passes that they get to manage a shot on target still. It's Dumbia with a flick on from a long goal kick. As we get a warning to close down Hernandez he's Dumbia's strike partner as we try another long ball over the top. Doesn't work very well and now Barca bring it out. Venturini being the key player again. He's running rings round us on the right hand side. Back to the full back and now into midfield. Algobia goes long over the top. Dumbia Dumbia has won the header off McDonnell, really poor defending there, and it's a good save in the end by Stojanovic, which gets it behind for a Barcelona corner. The highlight ends and we don't get to see it though, and it looks like it's going to be nil-nil at the break. A really decent performance, an even game, not many chances, but we'll take that away in the Champions League. We really want to produce a solid display, and nil-nil at the new Camp is nothing to be worried about. Venturini's covered the most distance of anyone on the pitch, as it looked like with his brilliant dribbling, and Nsingi's made the most blocks, he's prevented Barca having the shots on target. We mentioned his physical stats when we signed him, and they've proved to be key there as well. We're going to tell the lads to keep it up at the moment, in difference to what Stuart Jelling recommends, just because they've been defending so well, and most of them look delighted with that. I say most, all 11 of them responded positively, with varying levels of delight. It's Cater in the middle to Cura. We've not really see much of Cater so far. If we can get him on the ball, we might create chances. But of course, that's easier said than done. Away to one of Europe's premium sides. It's Andrade now to Omar though. Through ball to Andrade again. Brilliant effort from 20 yards. Nebel tips it away and Yeladian gets on the rebound. But it's a good challenge by the Barca fullback. Silvio Luiz got it out for a throw. And the highlight ends with just under an hour gone. Now Barca coming forward on the right. It's Hernandez on the edge of the box with a shot. Blocked easily and cleared away. Venturini with a second effort, but Silla can bring it out from the fence. Now we're back with a throw with Moraes on the left. 
Constant highlights here as it's end-to-end -end stuff. Though no real clear-cut chances yet. Though we've just about got a penalty there. Yeladi and brought down in the box by the fullback. Omar's the best taker on the pitch. But as we saw when we were going through the schedule, he has missed one in the last few games. Hopefully we'll get a red card here. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Just a shirt pull, so probably a yellow. And we need Omar to do something special here. Please don't miss two in a row. Please don't have any goalkeeper heroics. Just let Omar strike. Roll it in. Here it goes. It's into the corner. The keeper got a hand on it, but he couldn't keep it out. Omar gives us the lead at the new camp, and what a special night this could be in Europe. An hour gone exactly, and we take the lead, and now we've got a throw on the left. Morace in towards and Singi. It's a penalty again. What on earth is going on here? That one certainly got the voice cracking. Two penalties in three minutes at Barcelona. Omar shoots. It's the same result. Same corner. Again, the keeper got a a hand on it but it is into the net and what a crazy three minutes of action two Omar penalties from two crosses that were going nowhere and what a fantastic outcome we lead 2-0 at the new camp apologies for the voice that's got me excited and we just can't quite cope at the moment is the Eladian on the right to Omar we're starting to look dominant now and look at the confidence in the Brazilian amazing effort from 30 yards and a brilliant save from the keeper Omar takes the corner himself over the top towards McDonnell, couldn't win the header but holds it up, though it's cleared away by Barcelona. 20 to go and we will make some changes, just to try and freshen things up a little. We're going to make two changes. Firstly, Cater in midfield. He's going to be replaced by Lapin. Normally, we bring the new signing Kante on as first choice, but Lapin's been so good in recent weeks that I feel he deserves his chance on the big stage. And Yeladian's had an okay game on the right, but Diogo Souza's going to get a run out. Andrade's not got the best rating, but I feel like he's done a good job up front, holding the ball up well for us, so we'll give him five or ten more minutes. Fifteen minutes to go here in Spain, and we could be on for one of our most famous results. Just 10 to go now as the highlights keep coming. Silvio Luiz on the left hand side. Lucas holds it up for Di Benedetto. Good effort from midfield on the edge but it's blocked away and now Andrade can counter with two or three running past him. Inter a beat in Vienna by the looks of things. No real surprises there as Omar finds a substitute lapping up to Andrade on the edge. His shot's blocked and is cleared away long. The highlight ends almost immediately though and we're going to go and make our final change. Andrade replaced by Rutherford. Brilliant 80 minutes from him up front, and though his rating doesn't reflect it, he's been a real strong character for us. Inter lead 1-0 as you can see at the bottom, and Austria Vienna have had an injury too. Rutherford the sub with a free kick from 25 yards, and it is possibly our most woeful effort of the night. Just stoppage time to go then, and despite Barca's awful performance, Venturini's rating still above a 7, and that's for a team that have managed only 4 shots on target, which shows you just how good he's been. And Singi with a throw on the right, headed away as far as Cura, Omar holds it up in the middle, but Venturini wins it back. Up to Carrasco on the right, but the final whistle goes. What a brilliant defensive performance that was. Didn't really look under threat at any stage. One through ball which ended with an Nsingi block, and one shot that's Janovic had to make a good save from. Other than that, we were completely comfortable, and although we didn't look like scoring too often, we made the most of our crosses into the box, with two penalties and Omar scoring both. A fantastic away performance, textbook in Europe of exactly how you'd want to do it, and we could not be more proud of that. An absolutely fantastic night in the Champions League. That gives me hope that maybe we can go far, and surely we'll get out of the group stages now. Inter only won one nil at Vienna, so I I think we could be the favourites for the group. The lads are delighted with that performance. Omar, of course, man of the match. He strided with confidence after those two penalties with another couple of good efforts too. A brilliant performance all round though, with our entire back five in the ratings above a seven. Into one in the other game, so we're now dominant in the group. Six points for us, four for Inter, and just one for Barcelona behind it. And if we look at the player stats, there's a Glenarvan player as the top scorers there. He's one of three players level on five, and he looks like a fantastic pro as well. He has since gone to Norwich though, so that's a slight downer for them. Let's see what the media have said about the game. The rear guard action, they focused on it as well. We were so solid defensively, and I know we got two goals and won the game, but it really is the bit 
that pleased me most in that one, just how comfortable we looked at the back. To go to Barcelona and then not look like scoring really is something special to do. In front of 98,000 as well, almost 99 in fact, and over 1,500 fans from Torquay, what a night out they've had in Spain. We'll deal with the press conference off camera as we celebrate another 2.5 million coming in. Winning the game is fantastic for us and we're on course to reach our objective as the board wanted us to reach the last 16 again. Omar impresses and we're going to go and praise him. Yes, he was brilliant in scoring two goals and having the bottle to take those penalties, but his all-round performance ooze style and he had another brilliant shot on target and covered loads of ground as well. He's been really good for us in all competitions and remains one of our most important players. I know a couple of you said that he's your favourite and I really can't blame you for that. He's certainly up in my top three alongside McDonnell and Bacchanes. We've got our weekly message to say United are watching McDonnell. We signed him for £70 million of course and we may well make a big profit as we've got two other brilliant centre-halves but I'd really like to keep the England centre-back despite the United director of football Jose Mourinho chasing him every week. Omar's got to leave Torquay for Bayern. They're the thoughts of a 31-year-old Bayern Munich player, a world-class German midfielder, probably being lined up as his replacement. But let me assure you, Omar is going absolutely nowhere. He's got four years left on his contract and he will be here at the end of this save. So don't you try and unsettle him. Let's go and have a look at the dynamic screen to see the difference that's made. It's just increased the dressing room atmosphere slightly. Even the unhappy Silla had a good game. Everyone else is back in confidence and Richard Quirk's getting some first team games now and although he was rested for that one I'm sure he'll be happy with his output. What we've got to do as we go to the competition screen is really try and define where we're going to focus this year. The Carabao Cup is always the lowest priority for me, especially now we've won it once. So we've got a tough tie against Tottenham again. If the backup side get through then great, but if not we're not going to worry about it as the board don't seem to care either. Obviously the Community Shield win is not one we're going to worry about too much. The FA Cup we would like to go on a run, but it is going to be our lowest priority of the three. If we can stay in the title race till Christmas maybe we will focus on the Premier League but at the moment my plan is to go Champions League first but we could be through after four games at this rate. Inter's our only remaining opponent and we're not going to worry about the next game against them but the second of our double header in the middle we will go and show you that one. So we will get to see plenty of Champions League action, the one big competition that eludes us and of course we'll show some Premier League games too particularly over the busy Christmas schedule. You can see there's one surprise in the league so far. City down on nine points struggling and Sheffield United in their place up in fourth. They've been competing with the big boys so far. But if we go and have a look at the schedule, Sheffield United obviously aside we beat 1-0 and we were a bit worried about our form at that stage but they've proven to be a match for everyone. So we've got a really hard month coming up now. The West Brom game on paper is winnable but a lot of these lads won't be fit in two and a half days so that's going to be really difficult. Then away to Liverpool after the international break, the start of six really terrible games in a row, a home to enter in the Champions League, a double header against Tottenham, firstly in the Premier League then the Carabao Cup, followed by their North London rivals Arsenal. But then we'll be back in six games time for the last of that horrible bunch. A way to enter in the Champions League. If all goes well, we could be almost wrapping up qualification. Otherwise, we could be getting in a scrap with Inter threatening to do a double over us. So it's going to be a really interesting six games to see how it's going to shape our season. I think at the end, we'll probably be able to prioritise and decide which competitions we're most likely to win. Hopefully, that will still be the Champions League. But of course, that's easier said than done. So I do hope you'll wish me luck for the few games in between and come and join me again for another big Champions League one. Another massive away trip for the Torquay fans and hopefully they'll be loving their continental trips. But if you did enjoy this one and that really remarkable performance at Barcelona, a fantastic compact defensive display and a threatening look on the break as well, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the performance and what your thoughts are on the competitions we're in. Where should we be prioritising? Do I focus on Premier League glory again or do you think we have to go all out for the Champions League? Realistically, we've got three more seasons before FM20, so that's only three chances to win the big one in Europe or do we just say we could win two or three Premier League titles which of course isn't a given either but would be a remarkable achievement with its Torquay side to get to that level within 20 years.
Again, apologies for the slightly off-tone voice, especially after that second penalty. My voice is okay on a level keel now, but it still can't cope with the excitement yet. But I couldn't not play this save for any longer. I really am enjoying it greatly. But I hope by the time I get through to the next one and make the recording tomorrow, my voice will have improved slightly more and be a little bit easier to listen to. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM19 content from my long-term FM19 story. We'll be back again tomorrow at 4.30 of course, as we've got new episodes every Sunday to Thursday. Then on Friday we've got our Snooker 19 career, we're playing our final event of the series in that one, and it's the big one the season ending World Championships, as we try to go on a big run to the final. Can we win it in our final event? I hope you'll come and join me to find out. We've also got three episodes a week from my Cricket 19 career, that's every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at midday. A massive thank you to everyone that continues to support that series, as well as the Ashes Test playthrough beforehand. I can't thank you enough for giving it a try, and hope that you continue to enjoy the content. Then finally, FM20 has been announced, and there are obviously features being dropped in September, so we'll have our reaction to those ones in the coming weeks, as well as our plans for the game. So keep an eye out on Saturdays in particular. In our former slot for the head coach, we'll be showing you plenty of content for that one. I hope you're looking forward to FM20. Let me know who you're going to be managing, and obviously I'll be revealing my plans in the coming weeks, so I hope you're looking forward to them. But a massive thanks for watching this one as always, and you'll continue support with the series and I hope to see you next time for another big Champions League game as we go away to the mighty Inter Milan.